Hello and welcome to this tutorial on getting started with Encore. So we've pretty much made our project. We've imported some sequences as timelines into Encore. We've brought in a menu item, an image from one of our sequences in Premiere Pro that we exported as a still image, saved it as a PSD and brought it into our project. We've added buttons and we've customised the names of the buttons and we've chosen video buttons so that when we wired them up the first frame of the timeline that they're wired to is showing in the button. And we use the flowchart, one of the most important editing tools and one of the most powerful editing tools in Encore, and actually something that I'd like to see rolled out across many of the other applications in Adobe. I just think this is such an intuitive and powerful way of building a project because you can see everything. You stick your disk in and you can see it's going to the menu. The menu has got buttons. Each of those buttons are wired up. And what happens when the button is completed? What's the end action? It goes back to the menu. So we've built our project and we've looked at the actual build process, the actual process of putting the whole thing together so that we can click build for the DVD. However, as I mentioned in the last tutorial, there is actually an option to make flash websites or flash DVDs or web DVDs for want of a better phrase. If you click flash, you have a different set of options that come up. Now the first one, obviously it's going to output to an SWF and we can still check our project as before but we know that this particular project works. The source however is just going to be the current project that we're working on, which is fine. And the destination is quite important. Where are we going to save it? So we need to browse to somewhere. At the moment I'm just going to browse to my desktop as per normal and click OK. And it's going to be named Treasure. You have the option to save it as an F4V or an FLV. Now, F4V is the newer version and it is based on the H.264 codec, so it's quite modern and, and excellent. FLV is the older codec. However, there are advantages and disadvantages. FLV is ubiquitous. Virtually every machine out there will play an FLV. However, F4V, although becoming so much more popular, is not on absolutely every single machine. So you need to think about your audience. Who is this for and what type of machine are they going to be able to play it on? I'm going to stick with F4V because most of my audience are pretty technically savvy and I'm not really going to go to people who've got no idea because they aren't going to watch my output. Okay, presets. How high quality and what size do you want this to be? So you can go from the standard high quality, medium quality, low quality, much smaller, bigger, all the way up to Note 720. You can have widescreen high quality 720. So I'm going to click on that one and make sure this is going to be a widescreen high quality production. Okay, well, I don't have any subtitles. Um, however, I do have the option of having a template. What is a template? Well, a template is kind of like the shell that goes around your video. Now, you can import templates. They should actually come with your program. Mine are actually in CS4 and they haven't come to CS5 for some reason. So I'm going to import a template just to demonstrate it to you. So I'm going to go to where I know my templates are. I'm going to click on Corporate and then click OK. And it's going to give me a warning message, but I know it's going to be OK. So I'm going to click Yes. It's actually brought in the template and I can preview the template. And when you preview the template, It gives me this look around the outside. This is what the template's going to look like when it's loaded into my web browser. So let's load in another one and see what it looks like. So let's go to Import Template. Go back to where the templates are. Just in case you can't find them, let me actually show you what they'd be on your system. Program Files x86. Um, they're not under the Program Files for the CS5, some of the CS5 projects. So you need to go where you know your Adobe files will be. Under my particular one, it's Program Files x86. And I'm actually going to go down to Encore CS4. And I'm going to open that up and go down to where it says Template. And then I've got Corporate 1, Corporate 2, Sports and Wedding. Let's just open up Wedding for argument's sake. Just click on the folder that says Wedding and click OK. I get a warning, but it should be OK. Click Yes. In comes Wedding. Select it. Preview the template. You can see it gives me a completely different look. This is where my video will be, or my DVD project, or my web DVD project will be, and the template is what it looks like all the way around. And you can choose which one you want. And they give you four options, and I'm sure you can find more on the web. Okay, I am actually going to go with the corporate one. 
and then at the end is where do you want to keep your flash video files I'm going to create the whole thing and I would upload it separately so what do we do well we can check our project one more time click start are we happy with it yes we know it's all fine so now all I need to do is build my flash website so click build and wait it takes a while because it simply needs to transcode all of the timelines so I'm going to cut this time out and I'll come back to you when it's finished okay so it's finished that took quite a long time even though this is a fairly short project and this is where the time comes you need to set everything up with Encore double check that you're happy with it double check that there's no broken links everything's doing what it should be and then you can build the project as I say it takes quite a long time to do when it's done click OK then you can navigate to your desktop and you will have the folder and inside the folder you will actually have your index document you can double click on that and there is your web DVD and you can click any one of these things and there it is running perfectly as a web DVD and of course you can upload this to your website you can have it as a separate page you can just rename the pages as you need to so there you go that's how you can create a web DVD or web video using Encore as well as your ordinary DVD and Blu-ray and when you bear in mind that the way things are going is very much more web video people are constantly accessing video on their phones on their tablets on the internet in so many different ways Encore is a tool that is very powerful and can help you to help your customers quickly navigate to what they want because you don't just have to have one menu bear in mind that when it finishes say with the first video it could then go to a second menu and maybe a third menu to help your customers find what they need to find well I hope you found these tutorials useful there will be more coming up in the future my name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching mm -hmm.